One of the things that we've been seeing over the last 10 and 20 years is unfortunately an increase in overall incidence of allergies, particularly food allergies. In the United States alone, statistically, we've seen a 50% increase in peanut allergy over the last five years. Sorry, 100% increase. So we've seen it double in incidence just in the last five years alone in the United States. And the at this rate, it's, it's alarming and it's a very scary situation. So when we're able to recognize and identify these, these triggers that potentially can affect people, we need to figure out what it is that someone's allergic to and then teach them about how to avoid it. What is something that people should be alert to? Um, should you just test everybody or what do need, people need to know to make sure that a loved one doesn't you know, get hurt because of an allergy? Yeah, unfortunately, into a, a new food. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when we're introducing new foods to individuals, we suggest starting off with a very small amount of that new food and watching them carefully to see if they are having any signs of a reaction. Now, those signs could be something like vomiting. Mm -hmm. They could have cough, congestion. They may spit or not like the food. Mm -hmm. They may have diarrhea. Or sometimes they may have hives, lip swelling, difficulty breathing and going to anaphylaxis. Right. So, I mean, if you're seeing a reaction unfold in front of you, these things happen very quickly. And they are very, very scary, uh, especially as a parent of a child with food allergies. When you see that happen, you feel very helpless. And that's a normal situation to feel when you're in that type of uh, situation at home. The best thing is really to call 911. Right. In addition to working at the hospital, you have a practice in Royal Oak at uh, Rochester Road and uh, 13 Mile Road? Yes, I do. And, um, you know, what are some of the trends that you're seeing from your practice locally? A lot of food allergies. It's very, very unfortunate because, you know, growing up here, uh, I remember as a child, uh, as many people that have grown up here, um, eating peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day is a staple and, mm -hmm. and not having to worry about what we eat at school and, more importantly, not worrying about affecting somebody else that may have a problem with food. And mm -hmm. one of the trends we're seeing now is that everyone in a school probably has a classmate or two mm -hmm. with a food allergy. Mm -hmm. And it's making sure that we're protecting our children from having a problem. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, we're protecting others that may have a problem with certain foods and making sure we don't expose them unnecessarily. Right. Now, um, you know, you're saying that we've seen a 100% increase in the cases of uh, these allergies. Uh, is there a reason for this growing trend? You know, unfortunately, that is the probably billion dollar question. We don't really know why the incidence is increasing so much. And that's one of the key things that most lead uh, investigators at many institutions around the country and the world are really trying to figure out why is there such an increase in, in food allergy in general. Because if we could figure out a way to prevent this from happening, we could really dramatically lower the incidence. Right. Now, um, I want to congratulate you on your bio I have of, for you here right here. It uh, says that you were uh, 2010 Metro Detroit's best doctor uh, list for Style Line magazine. Well, and, thank you. And actually uh, just was the name to the 2011 list. Uh, yeah, thank you. List. And uh, Our Detroit has repeatedly named you to their Detroit top docs list and uh, that's quite an accomplishment and uh, we appreciate uh, the uh, good customer service and the good care you're giving to well, people in our you. community. And uh, tell us a little bit more about what your responsibilities are at uh, Beaumont Hospital. Well, running, running the allergy division at Beaumont Hospital is, uh, is uh, a wonderful honor to have. Um, I have the luxury of meeting wonderful families and helping them through uh, identifying certain things that people are allergic to identifying those triggers and teaching them really things that we've talked about in the clinic, finding ways to minimize exposure, limit exposure, and then if the unexpected happens, what to do in those kinds of situations. On top of that, we have administrative duties where we have to make sure we have a curriculum in place for residents, medical students. We have a new medical stool starting at uh, Beaumont that's affiliated with Oakland University. So a lot of us are now gearing up to start giving basic science lectures to okay. uh, new doctors and hopefully they'll be taking our places you know in 20 or 30 years. 
Um, but just how dangerous can allergies be to people? Well, common symptoms that we see. Uh, runny nose, watery, itchy eyes, sneezing congestion. Those are things that we get from pollens, pet dander, mold, dust, etc. Mm -hmm. and, and those can be debilitating in itself and probably something different. Okay. Food allergies, on the other hand, are very serious. And these are life-threatening reactions. And unfortunately, anywhere between 5 to 20 minutes after coming into contact with or eating and ingesting a, an allergic food, they can have a life-threatening reaction. A reaction that, uh, unfortunately, we see statistically leads to about 400 deaths a year in the United States alone. Wow. And these are deaths that probably could have been prevented? Right. I mean, you know, with food allergies, again, if we can have an action plan in place and know the foods that we need to avoid, um, making sure that we're aware of the signs early, we can prevent these things from happening. Right. Now, you know, what are the types of things you need to be considerate of if, say, you were like me and weren't really familiar with the risks of an allergy, but yet, um, you know, there are people now in the community that have these uh, problems that you need to be aware of? Yeah, this is a really huge area that's growing. I mean, it's unfortunately a growing trend we're seeing in, in schools, we're seeing it in airlines, travel industry, um, a lot of restaurants are now catering towards this, right. and all the packaging on foods you'll see are labeled specifically for people that have allergies. Right. For most people that don't have allergies, it's hard to understand because we're not in that situation where we see these things every day. So it really doesn't affect us directly. Exactly. But I think the biggest thing is being very considerate when we know that these are not minor things that are going to affect somebody. This can be a matter of life and death within a few minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think being considerate and having an open mind and approach to that kind of situation is very important. So how do you handle, for example, a staple of flying some places that you get a bag of peanuts? You know, that's uh, one of the things, you know, traveling quite a bit here and there, I, I see peanuts on the airlines. And for me, it, I'm, I'm a little nervous knowing that that's available on, on planes because, again, it's everyone's right to eat what they want, and mm -hmm. I can full-heartedly understand that. But I also worry about people that are allergic and coming into accidental contact with a food that somebody may be eating across the aisle or in front or behind us mm -hmm. can lead to a severe reaction. And when we're up in the air, that can really become a dangerous situation. So mm -hmm. I think being considerate if, if people are asking to avoid eating those things during a flight because there may be a, pla a passenger that has an allergy. Mm -hmm. I think being open to that and to that request um, I think is a very helpful thing a as a courteous neighbor. I'm just wondering, you know, if you are a parent, um, you know, and some one homeroom teacher and other parents says they want to be nice and they have good intentions and they, they bake something but you don't know how it was put together, should you just advise your child not to partake in that in general for yeah. the risk? I, my, my advice to my patients and, and parents is if it is not packaged and labeled, their child should not eat it. Um, if it's not made at home by their, their family and it's not clearly labeled in a package, they really shouldn't be eating it. And uh, what is the risk for something like, for example, uh, Halloween candy? Um, Halloween is a big problem for people that have food allergies because a lot of candy that's manufactured in the United States is all manufactured in a, in a facility that also handles peanuts and mm -hmm. tree nuts. And so finding foods that are safe and making sure that our children are safe when they are allergic is a, is a big issue. I generally suggest letting them participate in trick-or-treating but not touching the candy and then when they get home they can have a special treat or a bag of treats that right. is all peanut free or safe right. for their child to have. So allow them to enjoy the festivities but just censor it when you so to speak when you get home to make exactly. sure exactly so right. they don't feel left out they're still entertained and they're having fun and they're able to dress up and be like everyone else because they're really not different from anybody else it's just right. we have to watch what they eat the the other thing at school is there are peanut butter substitutes that are that are pretty good and that are available now some schools have gone peanut and tree nut free and they use soy butter uh, made out of soybeans and they also use sunflower butter made out of sunflower I've seeds. I've had the sunflower butter and it tastes good but you get a little bit of sunflower seed taste in your mouth. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit of an adjustment especially growing up on peanut butter it's yeah. a little different. And uh, but 
you know, what do people need to be aware of is there are different sensitivity to allergies. I mean, for some people, can they breathe it in compared to some other people having to ingest it versus some other people being touch does that the does the way you come in contact differ among people yeah for the most part touching directly and ingesting can lead to very severe reactions um, inhalant or airborne allergens can happen but it's usually when the food is being cooked processed and aerosolized such as in restaurants where they're cooking and frying things um, direct peanuts and things like that now some individuals are very very sensitive and these are probably individuals that have been repeatedly uh, uh, had major allergic reactions and mm -hmm. then when they're even in contact with the airborne uh, antigen that they may start feeling like they're having a reaction mm -hmm. so uh, it's just important to be aware of um, you know, making sure that we've got an action plan in place and, and those individuals are very careful. Right.